Today, however, new parts, like new radios, are difficult to get. Therefore, when your radio needs attention, it's important that you call not just a handyman, but a highly skilled radio technician. Good day, and welcome to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. We're carrying on with part four of our Holocrafters S40 restoration project. And uh, this uh, video is going to be focused on resistors. I've had a few questions from some of our users, so let's see if we can get those answered or at least uh, get you started. So resistors fail for uh, a number of reasons. Um, in these old radios, you often have them fail due to high current, that they've been passing a high current and heating for a period of time, um, and a resistor can climb in value or just drop in value. Um, also, these old carbon resistors are also subject to moisture to some degree. So there's lots of reasons they fail. But I think the most important thing, rather than understanding why they fail, is, is indeed they fail and they drift. Um, if a resistor burns up, that's probably a pretty key indication it was either designing correctly or there's some problem upstream um, that caused that to burn up. But uh, in these old sets, um, we find a few common specifications. There are, of course, many different values of resistance from less than an ohm to well up into the mega ohm region. Um, but the power handling capability of each resistor is specified by the designer. Uh, common values in these uh, radios are half watts. And you'll see that some of the power resistors might be 1 or 2 or 4 or 10 or 20 watts or more. And you can find out the resistor ratings in the manufacturer's schematics. Like Helicrafters will give you a list of what every resistor is and what its wattage value is, so it makes it easy to replace. <clears throat> the next specification you need to be aware of is its tolerance. And a lot of the resistors have a 10% a tolerance, <clears throat> and that's marked with a silver band on the resistor. So if you have a 1,000 ohm resistor and it measures either 900 or 1,100 ohms, you know it's right on tolerance and probably should be replaced. But if it measures like 1,025 or 975, well, that's well within tolerance and, and it can stay. So you have to look at not only the, you know, the resistance value, you have to look at the wattage value, and you have to look at the tolerance. And then you can actually make a measurement and understand what you're looking at. So if you have a, a resistor that's rated for a half watt, um, that's a thousand ohms, um, that's rated at 10%, you now can do the calculations of what is and what isn't acceptable when you measure that resistor. So the next big thing is measuring a resistor in circuit. And we're going to go and look at a schematic. And an easy way to remember this is if one end of the resistor is open or freed by, let's say, you pull a tube and the resistor dead ends in that tube, that's great. You've got an open end and then you can get a clean reading. Or if it dead ends at a capacitor, um, you've got an open end and you can get a reading. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at a schematic. And we're going to talk about that more and understand that more. And uh, I'm going to go through our S40 project here. And uh, we're also going to talk about what resistors usually go and which ones don't. Um, and that's from a, a load perspective. Um, some of these Hylocrafter receivers, I have replaced almost every resistor in some sets. In other sets, barely a one, which is really strange. Maybe it's batches of resistors from different manufacturers that were better than others, or there was storage was different where there wasn't as much moisture, or maybe the set didn't get used a lot. The world may never know. But anyways, let's get into a schematic and let's uh, let's understand um, how we need to set up for testing for a resistor now that we know what the tolerance is. Again, that's the that's the key thing to replacing a resistor. How far the tolerance is it? 
you know, some resistors could have a 20% tolerance. You have to look at the manufacturer specification, but that 10% tolerance for a lot of the common resistors is pretty straightforward and, and, and again, commonplace throughout the receiver. So, you know, if the resistor is out by more than 10%, you know, right off the bat, replace it. And myself, I am have a little bit of OCD with this. Um, this only goes back to an old friend of mine uh, by the name of Bill Foltz, who worked for the Hammond Transformer Company. And he designed tube equipment and transformers and all kinds of things for his entire career. And his ideology was is that if he designed a circuit with a, a thousand ohm resistor in it, that's what he expected. Not 1100, not 1050, not 950, but 1000 ohms. So that made me a little bit fussy that when I see a resistor is drifted over 5% or 6% or 7%, I usually pull the trigger and replace it. Um, and I mean, when you go through a radio and you tighten up the resistor, certainly we're going to get into anode cathode resistors uh, and power resistors, which really make a big effect on the radio. You can seriously improve the performance of your radio. Um, and uh, again, we'll look at that on schematic and how that all works. So we'll, we'll go right to a schematic now. So before we look at the schematic, let's talk about navigating under uh, the chassis of a tube radio. I know some of our subscribers have gone, oh my God, it looks like a big rat's nest in their head. How, how do you navigate that? Well, try to look past the rat's nest and look at the bottom of each tube. And that's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look in the bottom of the chassis at, at the bottom of a tube. And you'll see that each tube has a pin. These are octal tubes, and each tube has a pin. And when you find that pin, when you're looking at the underside, you can count off the numbers, one, two, three, four, in a clockwise fashion. This is how you navigate in an old tube radio. Um, those numbers, one, two, three, four, are directly equated to numbers on the schematic. So if you're looking for a resistor, say on pin three, Find the notch, count off three pins, look for the resistor. It's just that simple. Um, also, some of you new folks probably uh, aren't um, trained, haven't trained yourself, or haven't learned all the resistor color codes. I will put a, uh, a link to a very nice resistor color code calculator in the, uh, in the description for this video below. So let's move on and take a peek at that schematic now. Right, we're looking at the uh, schematic for the Halicrafter S40, and we're looking at V1, which is the first tube. It's a first RF amplifier. It's the first tube inbound signal from the antenna C sees. Um, so having it function properly and being a strong tube is important. Um, but insofar as a tube, there are two most important resistors. One is called a cathode resistor, and another is called a plate resistor. And this tube has got both. This is the plate and this is the cathode of the tube. And if you pull the tube out of its socket, you open up an end of all of these resistors. So now you can clip on to either of these three resistors and easily test them without interference in circuit. Now if you can't uh, free one end of a resistor, uh, you can always desolder and lift one end of it and if you have to do that, I just don't bother. I just replace the whole resistor rather than trying to solder it back down. Um, so we've got here now, we've got a, I believe it looks like a 120 uh, cathode resistor and a 22 ohm plate resistor. And if these are 10%, you know, you can do the math. If they're outside of that 10% tolerance, you replace them. And it's just as simple as that. So those are the most common type of resistors that drift because of current. Um, there's a lot of uh, heavy demand on those resistors, if you will. Um, so they are very subject to uh, drifting and fail, failing and falling out of spec. And we talked earlier in the last modules, or a couple of modules, about a lot of the power resistors. There's uh, a lot of these resistors that the, uh, like this one here and this one here, 
there's an awful lot of juice that goes through some of these resistors uh, around the uh, <clears throat> power supply. And they're bigger. They're two or four watts. Sometimes, you know, it depends on what radio you're running and whether there's a voltage regulator like an OD3 or something like that. Um, they can be bigger, 10, 20, 30 watts, whatever case may be. So again, the manufacturer's specifications will tell you what they are, and you can go and measure them. And these are, you can measure when you're uh, dealing with the, uh, the power supply module, uh, like I had stated earlier in, uh, in the second part of the series, was uh, called power supply. We dealt with the power supply, the uh, filter caps, um, and the electrolytes for the uh, for the audio tube. So once that's all apart, it's very easy to get in and measure these and find out what's going on. So that um, is kind of it in a nutshell. If you have more questions about that, please leave them below. I've been dealing with this for so many years, and it, it kind of sort of comes so naturally to me that, uh, you know, I... I I don't have to give it a lot, awful lot of thought. You know, here's another cathode resistor here now, R9, 1,000 ohms. Again, you pull the tube out, you're blocked by a capacitor on this end, you can measure that resistor in situ and decide whether it's good or not. And if, if these resistors um, go begin to drift higher in value, that means less bias on the tube, less efficiency, less gain. So you're going to be hurting the efficiency of the radio um, by leaving these. If these are out of spec or out of range by 10% or more, um, you're, the only thing you're doing is you're killing its performance. Um, for instance, one of the power resistors in this radio that I replaced, one of the big ones, um, was uh, specced out at 10,000 ohms. And it measured 18,000 ohms. Like, that's a huge drift. And replacing a, a resistor with that much loss in it would be a major performance boost for the radio. And, I mean, uh, I already know that uh, R4 in this radio is measuring 27 ohms. And that's outside the 10% uh, tolerance. And I already know that when I replace it with a proper 22 ohm resistor, that I'm going to get a bit of a performance gain. And it's just as simple as that. So um, with that, I think I'm going to flip the chassis over and uh, start going through all these resistors. And uh, we'll see how it does. Let me just see if I can find something here. Sorry for scrolling around, making everybody sick. But here is a good example of a manufacturer's requirements for all the different resistors it tells you what they are being a thousand ohms this one's got a 20 percent tolerance and a half half watt carbon resistor well you can use a new modern film resistor one of the blue ones is fine and i highly recommend that you order in a stock um, i'm surprised you can get some fairly good resistors off amazon um that and, and well, let me let me just clarify all this I'm saying you should put a stock of resistors in of all the common resistors, and you can get some good stuff off Amazon. I don't buy 20% or 10% resistors. I buy 1% resistors. I buy extremely accurate resistors. And I, I do, although I do have some half-watt resistors on hand, um, I only usually stock 1-watt one 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 resistors or bigger. So if I replace a half-watt resistor, I'll put a 1-watt in. Like, for instance, if this one, 10,000 ohms, goes bad at a half watt, I'll put a 10,000 one watt resistor in. That gives it some longer life. And you can see here's a two watt. You know, I have a good stock of two watt, three and three watt, and some five watts in stock. And, of course, I've got some bigger power resistors, but uh, everybody's design is different. So I'm, I find myself constantly ordering power resistors. They're very difficult to keep a big stock on because they're expensive. Um, but these smaller ones, I mean, you can get a good selection of 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt uh, resistors off of uh, Amazon. So consider ordering a stock. And I actually organize mine in binders so that I can get to them quickly so they're not in bins and all a tangled mess and 
Um, so when I want a 10,000 10, ohm or a 12,000 ohm resistor, I can find it in a matter of seconds and get it in. So uh, consider, uh, consider that. So I guess I'm going to head into this S4 and start testing resistors. And uh, let's see what we find. So let's apply what we just learned. So we're looking at the base of V1, which again is the first amplifier RF tube. And according to our schematic, we have two resistors we want to look at, R4 and R2. Um, and of course, we're going to want to look at uh, R31 here, 22. So let's look at this one here now. R4, we can look at this one. This one is pin four. Let's look at pin four first. Should be a 22 ohm resistor there. So we can find our, our notch in the tube and count one, two, three, four. Well, there's our resistor there. The schematic says it should be 22 ohms. Let's just clip on. The tube is out of the socket, so it has an open end. If I can get on it, that is. See, that's coming up around 27 ohms. It's out of spec. Um, it's, it's a replacement, that's for sure. So uh, the next 22 ohm resistor is on pin 8. And if this is pin 1, based on our obviously, then this one must be pin 8. So let's move up. And that's another 22 ohm resistor. How much you want to bet? It's out of, out of whack, too. And there you go. 27, 28 ohms as well. So that's an automatic replace. So that's just how easy that is to do, <coughs> is by counting the uh, uh, the pins and uh, following things through and looking at the schematic and checking each resistor as you go. Uh, plate and uh, cathode resistors being most important. Uh, they're the ones that are going to seriously affect performance. Take your time and work your way through it. That's what I'm going to do right now with this radio is I'm going to go through... Uh, all of the resistors and uh, replace any that uh, are uh, probably six or seven percent or more out of spec and uh, put fresh ones in. These small resistors you see here are half watt. I will we'll probably replace them with one watt. I don't know if you can see that one over there. I've probably got it zoomed in, but you'll see when uh, when I get done. So hopefully this has taken some of the mystery out of replacing resistors for you. And uh, we'll be back with some uh, updates in a minute or two. Well, here we are with all the resistors done. I've been through all the resistors in this set here, um, and it wasn't too bad. I replaced a few. You can see a few new bright, shining blue faces in there, uh, mostly cathode stuff. Um, but uh, this was probably pretty typical of a radio. Some you don't, like I said before, you don't do any or hardly any, and some you do almost all. And this one, you know, was... What do I got here? Close to a dozen, maybe, plus the power resistors and whatnot. And uh, so at this point, this radio is electronically rebuilt. Um, normally, at this stage of the game, it would be flip it over, put tubes in it, and turn it on. Let's see if we've got a radio. But if you remember from the initial assessment video, the main tuning capacitor is loose and slopping all over the uh, upper deck. Um, the grommets in it are bad, so uh, I'm going to do something different there with it and uh, also get the dial window back center with the uh, front face plate again. Um, so with that in hand, um, I might as well go ahead and clean the top of the chassis and uh, some other niceties because, um, I mean, I have to kind of sort of lift the capacitor a little bit. Might as well clean under it. So with that, I'm going to end this video here, and uh, I hope you uh, got your questions answered in regards to replacing resistors. If you didn't or if you've got more questions, leave them below. Um, be happy to answer them. So until the next one, we uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you again.